We've got the new X-Bolt 2 here with the carbon fiber barrel. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm in love with the look of this gun. I'm super excited to shoot it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our scope on here. Simply starting off, we're gonna wanna remove these little orange bits. It's also just getting in the way. We're gonna rock the Cabela's Intensity LR scope. This is a four to 16. And the reason I'm going with this one is we've had great success with these. They're at a great price point and gonna be honest, might have dropped them a couple different times on a couple different guns. And those ones still track, so we're doing good. And if it can do that, because I'm quite a clumsy person, then we're doing pretty damn good, I'd say. The scope ring mounts that we're gonna be using are the Browning X-Lock system. And again, we've been using these for years and years and years. They are straight from Browning. They're going onto the Brownings. They have their own four pin, well, eight pin system in total that mounts to these rings, that mounts to the scope. And again, we haven't had issue with them. So why not stick with them? All right, so now that we've got the X-Lock system out, we're gonna make sure that we put them on the correct placement. And as you can see, you have your front and your rear brackets. And you can also kind of tell by just looking at it. Right here's a significantly stronger curve, where here's significantly flatter. And you can even see it when you're looking down these. There's quite a bit of a difference in curvature of the bottom of the mount. So, of course, your curved one's gonna go up front. You're not so curved, gonna go in the back. All right, now that I've got these uh, bottom portions of the mounts off, I'm just gonna kind of set them on here, get an idea for where they're gonna be at. Take the scope and just make sure I'm gonna have enough playroom with these mounts on there. And if, again, you gotta make sure that you have your front and your rear um, mount in the correct location. Otherwise, it's gonna, you're gonna have some weird mounting issues uh, where the screws might not line up perfectly and stuff like that. However, one of the important things, that reason I just make sure that this fits on here appropriately, appropriately is because, as you can see, I have probably an inch on both sides, which is gonna give me about an inch of movement either way. And the reason I'm gonna keep that movement in there is once I get these bottom brackets mounted onto the gun, I'm gonna bring the gun up, kind of get a feel for it, move the scope back and forth to get the appropriate amount of eye relief for me or whoever plans on shooting the gun. All right, what I like to do, take some Loctite and just put a dab in the very top of the hole right there like that, because as you screw them in then, it will drive it down into there. I'm just a dab, you don't need a lot. I'm just gonna set this up here like that. Again, make sure it's your front mount that you're putting on there. And then just for extra precautions, I just throw a little dab at the very base of the screw and then I drop them in. All right, now I'm just gonna grab my big torque screwdriver. I'm gonna move it to about, Browning calls I believe for 18 pounds, uh, inch pounds for these screws when you're mounting the brackets to the actual firearm. So I'm gonna rock it about 15 because they say no more than 18. And I don't want to accidentally strip a screw in there. These are all screwed in. It's not going anywhere. And right up next to it, you can even see that it fits that curvature of the receiver perfectly. Gonna take our Loctite, dab it up again. And then rock our screws into there. Turbo Loctite. This Loctite is low strength. Do you know why? It's because that's all we had. <laughs> We're all dabbed up. Gonna lay it on this place there. We'll grab our driver and tighten these bad boys in. Now that we got those bottom mounts on, I'm just gonna seat the scope, put it in there. I'm gonna take it out of this mount and I'm gonna go ahead, bring it up to my eye, get a feel for it, make sure I have enough room again enough eye relief from where my eye is at to where the scope is gonna be at. And that feels actually pretty good right there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna drop this back into place, tighten it back down so we don't have any mishaps of movement, because that'd be unfortunate. Now all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm just gonna mark the inside of where that scope ring is gonna be at. Now you might not be able to see it too well on camera because I'm using a black Sharpie. And the only reason I'm doing that is for aesthetical reasons because I don't want to see silver or black lines around it. And what we're going to do after this is actually take a tape and wrap around before we seat it into the mount after we level it and everything else. So we got a few more steps, but we're almost there. By doing this, it's just going to give us a good idea of where we're going to want that scope back at. 
All right, so now we're gonna take this part of the scope off, set that over the side. And what we got here is we got a two part leveling system, a little leveling kit. I'm gonna put one up here on the ring. What that is, is this ring is essentially screwed. It is screwed down to the gun itself. And that's gonna be level right here, right? So what we wanna do is take the second part of this leveling kit, throw it across the barrel. And the reason we're putting it down on the barrel is it's so it out of the way of the scope when we go to attach the scope. So I'm just gonna get it semi-tight. I'm gonna look back down here again, make sure this is level, cause this is what we need to be level for that scope. You can't have much leeway on a scope when it comes to uh, your cant, cause it can throw things off in the long run, especially if you're shooting it using any of the other hashes, then you're gonna run into a lot of issues. So now what we're gonna do, tighten this down. You gotta fiddle with it just a little bit. You get it fairly close and then we'll use this top piece. Okay. It's actually pretty darn close right there. I think we're good. All right, so now we're gonna take this portion off. And like I said a minute ago, what we're gonna do is we're just take some, some electrical tape. This You don't have to do this part. This is just something we've been doing forever now. Take the electrical tape, run it around once, maybe twice, depending on your, how tight your scope rings are and you're gonna seat it into the place that we had previously marked and take our little level, put it right on the head of the scope. As you can see, we're not quite level there. We're quite a ways off. We're just gonna, with the tape, it gets a little bit harder because obviously it wants to stick to those mounts. So you might have to pick it up just a little bit. Make sure we're level. Looks like there's a hair of a difference in there. I'm just gonna Rock it over a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rock these top mounts back onto there. Be careful putting them on, as of course you can end up moving the moving the level again. As you're putting them back into the bottom mounts, just make sure that that stays level with your front leveling uh, mount, or however you have it leveled. Um, I mean, there's been plenty of times where we've had to do this out in the field, and you just kind of eyeball it. It's not the most efficient way, but it works, especially if you've done it before, you understand that some situations you just can't quite get around. Um, however, we're gonna rock these in, and I want to I just wanna say I appreciate you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. If not, if you guys have something that I can do better, please let me down in, that, down in the comments, because obviously I'm young, I still have a lot to learn. Um, other than that, I'm fixing to go shoot this gun here in a little bit, so be ready for some other videos of that. <laughs> Don't forget, subscribe and like this video because that guy's really helps us out and uh, hopefully we can continue making more content like this for you guys in the future.